Good morning, YouTube family. Uh, should I say? Well, good morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever time it might be that you're watching this video. How are you guys doing today? Um, I believe it's Thursday. Yeah, so happy Thursday. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. I don't want to you know, take too long because I have a lot of information for you guys today. Um, as you can tell by the title, today I am going to be going over injections with you guys. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. If you're new here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you will be notified when I post a new video. Okay, okay. Like this video. It's going to be a great video, okay? Go ahead and like it, share it. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and get the injection. So <laughs> first thing first. When you're get well, before you give an injection, you want to make sure you have the right patient. I have a lot of stuff wrote down to y'all, so because I can't remember all this stuff. So yeah, I want to make sure I'm hitting every key point. So yes, if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my information that I have wrote down. Okay. First thing first, you want to make sure you have the right patient, right medication, right dose. Make sure you're giving it the right route, right, right time, right equipment. Write documentation, okay? Make sure you got all that stuff squared away. We don't want to be giving nothing to the wrong patient. We don't want to be giving the wrong medication to the patient. We want to make sure we're putting it in the right spot. And we want to make sure we have the correct needle, okay? We don't want to be using um, sub-Q when it's uh, intramuscular because you're not going to put the medication. The medication is not going to go where it needs to go. So that is very important. Make sure you're checking the label. Make sure nothing is expired. Make sure if it was supposed to be kept in the refrigerator, it was in the refrigerator. Um, if anything was left outside of the refrigerator for a long period of time, um, disregard it. Do not use that. And that's that's basically it with that part. So we're gonna go ahead and get into um, the injection. First thing first, subcutaneous, which is also known as sub. Q injection injections. Okay, so things that are given sub Q um, is insulin, morphine, Dilaudid, which is both are both um, pain medications and allergy medications. So let me show you guys a sub Q needle. So it's a 29 gauge, half inch needle. So when you first um, open a needle, I go ahead and push, push it up because it has air in it sometimes. So go ahead and push it up. Now with your vial, you're gonna, of course, clean it off. Cause most of the time with insulin, um, you know, you're going to keep using the same valve. So make sure you're using the alcohol swab and cleaning those off. Stick directly in, flip it up, slowly pull and let it. So when you pull, let it go ahead and fill the top. That'll keep you from getting so much um, air in it. So once it fill the top, go ahead and draw. Let's just say they're getting 15. So we have it draw to the 15. I have no bubbles because I took my time and did it. So yeah, pull it slowly, let it fill the top, and then finish um, drawing it. Like I said, that way you won't you won't have many um, bubbles. So now the sites for sub Q is going to be around your belly button. So you have two inches away from the belly button. You also have your thigh, the front of your thigh. Y'all, I wish I had somebody that I could use. So you're also gonna have the front of your thighs. Make sure you, you know, you get it where it's fatty. You mostly got some pinchings, you know, enough skin to pinch up there. And then also your back. So when you're doing your back, it's gonna be like, that like right on there, that fatty part right there. And then you also have the back of your arm. And then for, you know, larger people, you can also do like the side of the arm because you know, you got enough fat. As long as you're putting, putting it in that fat, the subcutaneous tissue is fine. So, um, 
Once again, that's the belly, thigh, back of the arm, and the back. So find you some good meat and go to work. I love, like people think I'm crazy when I say this, but when I have um, a diabetic, I love when they have those nice arms because I don't have to go in there and think, okay, where am I going to go? No, you got some good arms. So yeah, I can go anywhere. So grab that big hunk of meat and just, yeah. I call them the insulin arms. All right, so next, with the subcutaneous, um, the angles, if you can pinch up less than an inch, you're gonna go at a 45 degree angle. If you can pinch up more than, a, if you can get more than an inch, inch pinched up, you can just spread the skin and go at a 90 degree angle. So that those are the people with the nice arms and stuff. You can just, you know, cause you know that's fat. That's a lot of subcutaneous tissue. So let me see. I also have this small little book here, y'all, that my mom gave me when I first started school. It got wet, so it has little stains in it, but I'm gonna show you guys the sites. So these are the sites for the subcutaneous. And if you, if I can get it to focus, which I can't, I was gonna show you guys the angle, but I can't get it to focus. Um, with one of my giveaways, someone is going to win one of these books. So make sure you guys are staying tuned, watching videos and subscribing and liking and stuff. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the injection. Um, and the amount that you can give in a subcutaneous is 0 0.5 to 1 milliliter. No more. 0 0.5 to 1 milliliter. Okay. On to the next. Intradermal. So let me get my so intradermal, also known as ID, you can give um tuberculin skin tests, allergy tests, and local anesthetics. So um we mostly do TB skin tests with um the intradermal injections. So I'm gonna I don't wanna stick myself for real, but I think I wanna show y'all. So I think I'm gonna do it. I don't know. But anyway, so this is the needle. It goes by milliliters. That bad boy a little big today. So yeah. So intradermal, the sites for that is the inner forearm, chest, and the upper back. So it's basically skin that is, you know, smooth. No fat, you're just gonna go like right underneath the skin, so the epidermis. So, when we do TB skin tests, of course you're gonna clean the site really good. So you're gonna also make sure the bevel of the needle is up, and then you're gonna take it, ah! And you're just gonna stick directly right under the skin with the bevel up. Um, Pretty simple injection, not hard. Um, and like I said, you're mostly gonna be doing allergy tests, tuberculin tests, and um, local anesthetics. And the angle that you're gonna go is 10 to 15 degrees. And then the amount that you can give um, with intradermal is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 milliliters. No more, okay? So that is a 25 gauge needle. All right. And last but not least, intra, intramuscular, also known as IM. So intramuscular um, injections, mostly you give um, vaccines, antibiotics, and steroids, okay? So the sites for intramuscular is going to be the deltoid, of course. So with the deltoid, you're going to visually make a upside down triangle right there and you'll go directly there. You can feel the muscle. So it's really easy to do the deltoid. Um, with the deltoid, you're not going to give no more than one milliliters. If it's something more than that, go ahead and choose you another site. This is the easiest. Everybody likes to go for this. But remember, you cannot give more than one milliliter. Um, 
Also with intramuscular, let me just go ahead and show y'all the needles because I, I got something really important to say. Okay, so we also know that um, the bigger the number, the smaller the needle. Okay, so this is an 18. Now let me show y'all the 18. I be darned if you stick me with this. Don't touch me with this. If you come at me with an 18, I'm going to turn your ass right back around. Because you ain't about to stick me with nothing this big. I'm okay? And I'm just going to tell you. No. And don't let Y'all, this is big. Okay, whatever. Whatever. So, what I do with 18 um, gauge needles I use these to draw up medications. So let's just say if I have to mix an antibiotic, I'm going to draw up my solution and mix it and draw it back up with the, you know, and then put another needle on. I'm not going to use this to stick nobody with. That's torture. All right. So um, we also have, I think this one is the, I think this is the 22. No, this is a 21. And we also have a 22 here, which is the smaller of the bunch. Um, so you you use needles based off the patient, okay? So if you see that they are very fragile and small, don't go get in a big needle. That's just no, don't do that. And if they don't have that much muscle, please do not get a big needle that is gonna hurt like it's gonna hurt. And sometimes when you're doing um, intramuscular needles, you might hit that bone in the deltoid. So, you know, take it easy. Don't be trying to do too much, especially especially if they're small and fragile. And, you know, in the um, nursing home facilities, you're going to have a lot of residents that are very small and fragile. So, yeah, think, choose wisely when you're choosing the needles for those injections. Okay. Um, also with those injections, you want to make sure you are aspirating to make sure you are not in a blood vessel. So if you aspirate and you get blood, you're going to want to disregard it and start over. I did tell you guys the sites, but I want to go more in detail. I only gave you the delta. All right. So the next site is the ventral gluteal, which is going to be the site. So that's going to be that side right here. When you're doing these sites, you use your hand to get, you know, the correct spot. So you're going to always use that V thumb out and you're going to use the V right here. I'm going to show you all this picture. So ventral gluteal. This is how you put your hand and, you know, you go for it. It's, it's kind of... Mm, I wouldn't say tricky, but you're kind of nervous when you're doing them outside of the deltoid. I am because, you know, you don't want to hit a nerve. You don't want to hit the wrong spot. But if you're using this lamb or if you're using this technique, I'm sure you would get it. Um, the next site is the vastus lateratus, which is um, used mostly for in, um, infants. So, um, and that's going to be the front of the thigh. So it's that muscle right there when you um, flex it. Flex that muscle there, you will see it will pop up. That is um, the front of the thigh. So that is another easy one. And then the next one is the, let me pull my camera down. The next one is the dorsal gluteal, which is, I'm sorry y'all that I'm showing my butt, but it is the back, so it's the upper part here. And then you're also going to use that same technique. You're going to take your hand and make your, find a booty crack, go over some, put your hand there, and you're going to go right in between there. And you want to make sure you are using that technique because you do not want to hit a nerve. You don't want to damage anything. So yeah, take your time and do it right. And like I said, I'm going to be giving 
these books out as giveaways um, periodically. So, yeah, make sure you guys are staying tuned. So, with um, intramuscular injections, you're going to always go at a 90 degree angle. It's going to, okay, 90 degrees straight to it. Okay, it's pretty easy. Like, honestly, I don't know, all of them are easy to me. Once you do them so many times, piece of cake, no worries. All right, so um, with the intramuscular injections, you can give up to three milliliters. But like I said, with a delta wood, no more than one milliliter. And with the um, these injections, the, the medication is administered very fast um, into the bloodstream. So, yeah. Um, also, with intramuscular injections, you can use the Z-Track. So, with the Z-Track, you're going to find your spot. And you're going to pull the skin tight. You're going to pull it back very tight with your non-dominant hand. And you're just going to inject it. You know, inject the medication. Let the skin go. And that keeps the um, medication from oozing out. And that's, like I said, that's called the um, Z-Track. I don't really know too many people that use that. Well, I don't know what they do because I don't be in the room with them. But I, I never hear anybody talk about the Z-Track method. So, I don't know. But it's a pretty simple method as well. Like I said, you just pull the skin back, inject it, let the skin go. z track. And also, after you are given these medications, especially if it's um, insulin or pain medication, um, you know, make sure you are going back to check your resident to make sure it was effective. Um, make sure they're not having any adverse reactions. Um, with the t with the TB skin test, you're going to read that in 72 hours. So make sure you are marking the site. Wherever you give the TB injection, make sure you are putting a little circle around it so that the resident will know not to wipe that spot. Um, and I, I think I hit all corners. I think I did. Um, and just for me, so I can feel comfortable with the information that I gave you guys, I really want to go back over it really quick. And I'm going to go really quick, but I just want to make sure I am going back over it in case I was talking too fast or something. But subcutaneous, insulin, morphine, dilatic, allergy medications, sight around the um, belly button, two inches, the front of the thigh, the back of the arm, the back, the side of the arms, if you have enough tissue. The angle is going to be 45 degrees. If you can pinch up less than an inch, if you can do more than an inch, you're just going to spread the skin and go at a 90 degree angle. The amounts to give is 0 0.5 to 1 milliliters, no more. Intradermal, TB skin test, allergy test, um, local anesthetics. Um, and then that is going to go in a forearm, chest, back at a 10 to 15 degree angle. The amount is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 milliliters. Intramuscular, vaccines, antibiotics, steroids. Um, the site is going to be the deltoid, the ventral gluteal, vastus lateratus, and the dorsal gluteal. 90 degree angle. Up to three milliliters, no more than one milliliter in a dill toy. And then I can't stress this enough. Make sure you are um, giving it to the right person, right time, right dose, right medication, right route, right equipment. Um, and if you have any questions um, when you're giving an injection, be sure to just ask someone. Don't please don't be afraid to ask anyone. Especially if you are a new nurse and you don't you don't feel comfortable, let somebody know. You would rather let somebody know than make a mistake and you just end it all for yourself. Would you not? I'm sure you have a. I don't know. I can't say. But listen, if you need help, ask somebody. Please don't be afraid. Okay. Um, I just want to show y'all these injections. So again, so yeah, make sure you're pushing all the air out. Go straight in, turn it valve upside down, pull you a little bit in, 
So you can fill up the top, that way you won't have bubbles. And then draw it on up. Okay, no bubbles. But if you do have bubbles, of course, you're gonna do the little thumping method. Or you can also pull down and push back up. So you know what, I'm about to do bubbles. So you guys can see. All right, so all the air is out directly in and i'm just gonna pull it fast dang i still didn't get a bubble okay i'm the goat dang i need to get a bubble hold on let me just leave some air in here and then okay so if you do get air you're just gonna thump 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 till you get all the bubbles and then you also can pull it down like this, let all the medication come level, and then push back up and let some come out, and then you don't have bubbles. So yeah, that's perfect. And then this is water, so um, probably not getting bubbles because it's water. Certain medications is hard, y'all, because some medications are is very, very thick. Like it's different consistency with some medications. So you're more likely to get bubbles with some stuff. So yeah, but like I said, if you pull it in really slow and let the top fill up and then pull the rest, you might not get as many. And I think I covered everything. I feel like I talked a lot. I feel like I went too fast, but then I don't know. If I went too fast, you guys let me know. I will be more than happy to redo the video. Um, But yeah, let me know. Um. Like I said, once again, if you are new here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends, your peeps, and make sure they are subscribed to the channel as well. Once again, the goal is a 1,000 by December. I think we can do it, y'all. We are moving on up. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys, like, so, 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 so much. Like, because I'm really dedicated to this Um. And I'm really enjoying the fact that I am helping you guys. Um, I love the comments. Keep them coming. Yeah, y'all are great. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Once again, please give this video a big thumbs up. Share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell, okay? I heard some, well, in one of my comments, one of my um cousins said that the video started playing in her pocket. Okay, girl, you got the notifications turned on, honey. I think it's it's Destiny. I think that's her. So, shout out to you, boo. Um, Yeah, so go ahead and smash that like button, you guys. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Have a wonderful day. I love you guys. Keep it G, okay?